Thanks, everyone. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about a paper that uh, co-authored with Suleiman Diop on using Google Earth Engine to track agricultural encroachment uh, in Burkina Faso, specifically in uh, what we call pastoral zones or <clears throat> what uh, we might know as livestock reserves. So to give a little bit of background about what we're talking about here, um, the first thing is to understand pastoralism in Burkina Faso. Um, when we talk about pastoralism, we're talking about a mobile system of livestock herding. This means that livestock herders don't stay in one place for the whole year. They move their animals by the season uh, in search of pastures as the, seasons, as the seasons change, moving from the rains into the dry season. And in particular, we're looking at Burkina Faso. So right here in this red box. And this is a map of what these transhumans movements might look like. As you can see, it's a diverse map. You have long movements that seem to stretch across the entire band of the Sahel Sahara, and then you've also got small movements, which might be taken over the course of less than a season. So all that's to say is we're looking at a very heterogeneous type of movement system. Now, um, in the news over the past 10, 15 years has been a lot of discussion about clashes between farmers and herders, between more or less sedentary agriculturalists and mobile livestock herders. Um, this has been growing as we've had more land use conflicts over the years. Now, in response, uh, the Burkina Bay government created pastoral zones, partly to maybe settle some of these mobile pastoralists and in others to guarantee access to pasture. Right, is that a lot of the conflict happens over deciding land use between pasture and agriculture. So these pastoral reserves were created. Now what this project is going to be looking at is, are these pastoral reserves actually looking at grazing? Are they actually serving grazing? Or are they actually being used as well for agriculture? One of the common uh, narratives, actually the most common narrative about uh, these conflicts between farmers and herders is that it's these mobile herders encroaching on sedentary agriculturalists. It's a very simplified narrative, and like most simplified narratives, if you take it alone, it's bullshit. And I think that what we're going to try and do is hopefully this study will use some empirical evidence to show that it's actually more complicated like that, and that this encroachment, as we like to call it, can go both ways. This was a research project that was uh, funded by SNV uh, Burkina Faso as part of a wider project to understand land use pressures on pastoral systems. So, okay, now that we've gone over the background, where are the places we're looking at? We're looking at two pastoral zones in particular, Niassa and Sondreest. Both of these zones are located in the south of the country um, and are home to several thousand uh, pastoralists. So on the left, you can actually see a land use map, which I think gives a pretty interesting illustration of what we're looking at. So surrounding the two pastoral zones, which you can see shaded with a line, with a line fill, um, is cropland. So what's in the legend known as agricole. Within, the, uh, within the, the fill, you can see that it's uh, tapis herbacé, which is uh, grassland. So you can see that these are small islands of grassland within a sea of cropland that goes right up to the border of the zone. As you can imagine, this puts significant pressure on that land. So again, the big question, are these zones being fully used for pasture, as is indicated by the laws in their creation, or are they being used for other purposes? And are they being used by pastoralists, or are they being used by other communities? which is the big money question. So in order to figure this out, we used a methodology originally developed by Laure Boudineau at WFP, a World Food Program, called the three period time scan. Now what this does is it creates a pretty simple RGB image corresponding to three periods of the agricultural season. The red, which is the first band, is the beginning of the growing season. So about the first month and a half, starting from the sowing period to the various, corresponding to the sowing period. The middle is the green band, which corresponds to the second uh, month of the season. And then the end, so the harvest, is blue. 
And what's actually pretty cool about this is in the Sahel, this corresponds really well to, this, to the, uh, uh, the growth signature of rain-fed agriculture. So if you look here on this uh, map, you can see an example of what that looks like. All of that dark blue is active cropland. The lighter shaded around it is natural vegetation. Because so what you can see this chart here that shows for that exact pixel that's blue, you can see where the RGB is generated, right? Each of those NDVI values corresponds to a band. And you can see how it contrasts to the NDVI signature of the zone, right? That's the generalized average. So to give you a better idea, what this allows us to do is it allows us to signify different land use types very easily, very visually, right? So the RGB signature of each land use type is going to be different across the season. Agriculture starts out low. Understandably, the sowing period, cropland is bare, and then it peaks in the third part. Woody cover, or forest in general, is going to be high throughout the growing season, which makes sense, whereas natural vegetation in the Sahel will have a peak in the middle, corresponding to about a week or two weeks right after the peak of rainfall, and then it goes back down as biomass begins to dry out. And uh, you can see sort of what the RGB will look like for each of these different values, for agriculture, for forest, for natural. So you can start to see how this quite simple product that we uh, build in Google Earth Engine is able to very quickly make a visual representation of active cropland. So we use Google Earth Engine uh, because of simplicity of use, because while it is not uh, open source in the, uh, while it's not an open source software, it is free and easy to access. And rather than make a virtual machine somewhere, uh, we found that this was the easiest way to be able to not just show the results, but actually help other researchers to reproduce the results. Uh, at the end of the presentation, I'll talk a little bit about how it's being used elsewhere and um, some of the other uses that the three period time scan has had. So here is a um, sort of a, this is a, a little bit of a gift to show you once we've loaded into Google Earth Engine, the differences you can see. So this is in the southern part of Mali, well, sorry, southern uh, center of Mali. And you can see active cropland being changed from 2016 to 2019 in just a second. You can see a reduction, right? You can see that this, very blue spaces are being taken over by these lighter natural vegetation. This corresponds to cropland abandonment due to violent conflict. Um, and again, I think it shows the sort of power of this visualization and how easy it is to communicate changes in cropland. So how do we apply it to pastoral reserves? So this is, uh, remember there were two zones we were looking at, Sondreest and Nyasa. Right here, we have the zone of Nyasa. And uh, you can see all of that cropland around it, um, which is signified by the second uh, time series, not time series, the second uh, series on the graph here. Now, we've done the same thing as I showed you in an earlier slide where we just took samples of different land use types and mapped the NDVI signature across the growing season. Now, it's a little bit different than the earlier one because when you look at the Sahel, you're looking at a very agroecologically heterogeneous zone. Um, grassland, um, rather than peaking in the middle, actually sort of peaks the beginning, but gradually drops. Cropland, again, similarly, very low at the beginning, peaks at the end. Forest remains high throughout. Sparse vegetation remains unsurprisingly sparse. And uh, this allowed us to sort of get a general idea of, okay, well, what is cropland looking like here. And so this is an image from 2016, and you can see all of these cropland pixels completely surrounding the zone. Now the results showed um, a significant level of intrusion of uh, agriculture in, uh, from neighboring zones and also a growth of um, what we believe to be locally produced agriculture within the zones. So these are these two three-period time scan images. Um, probably come back to these, but I would like to just show you a visualization that's a little easier to read. So on the left, we have Nyasa, and on the right, we have Sondreest. 
So Sandre Est, you can see the lighter shade is 2016 cropland and the darker is the expansion in 2021. Now, it's not insignificant. There's a large expansion of cropland. However, we found that these were in the center of the zone, which seemed to indicate, as we'll show in later slides, that this was actually the pastoralists themselves growing these fields. It wouldn't really make sense for an encroaching agricultural community to come and build, come and make fields right outside the habitation of the zone's inhabitants. Nyasa, though, shows a much different story. You can see there's a sort of gradient moving, moving north to south. And as we'll show in a later slide, a lot of these uh, fields are contiguous with the cropland in the neighboring zone, which seems to indicate that this isn't actually being used for pasture, but this is growth of the existing cropland into the agriculture, into the pastoral zone. So we used a QGIS to calculate the growth. Um, in order to do that, what we did was we wrote a script um, using the Google Earth Engine plugin for QGIS. And we basically took the Google Earth Engine script we wrote and we translated it into PyQGIS which allowed us to visualize the images in QGIS and honestly manually trace them. This wasn't really possible with machine learning um, because so much cleaning had to be done that it was actually just faster to trace it ourselves given how small the zone was. Um, Nyasa, as we showed you, really had an astronomical growth of cropland within the zone. I mean, just absolutely astounding, going from you know, pretty negligible in 2016 with, to 2021, something like a, what, like 140% growth. Sondre Est, again, the growth was quite large, but again, in relative terms, not quite as shocking. So to provide a little more evidence on what we mean by the difference between fields planted locally by the zone's residents and the encroachment, on the left is an example in Sondre Est. So we've got a Bing aerial image of some uh, fields um, in the center. And is this a, here we go. So you can see here, these are actual habitations. The fields meet pretty closely. Whereas on the left, or sorry, on the right, Again, you can see the contiguous nature, right? You can see that the cropland that's in the zone oftentimes connects to fields nearby. And we found this was the case throughout the border. So what does this mean? Um, first of all, this methodology is reproducible. Uh, we've used it for cases in uh, humanitarian action um, to look at food insecurity, so measuring giving a very basic idea of cropland changes from one year to the next. And it's been used already in multiple countries in the South for a couple of years now. Uh, thematically, the thing that I find interesting is that this challenges the dominant narrative on these farmer herder conflicts, which is this idea of an invasion of herders onto farmland. Um, it's a narrative that you can find uh, being parroted in a lot of uh, media in the US and Europe when we talk about these conflicts. So but we have evidence to show that it's much more complicated than that, that it's not a simply one-sided case of one side encroaching on another, but there's actually encroachments happening on both ends. And I guess uh, importantly to all of the geeks in the room is we do have the code and the app available. Um, let me see if I can actually click here. On the next slide, actually, uh, we have, whoa, oh, can I have that back actually? Oh, that's cool. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. So we do have uh, an app uh, that we've loaded into Google Earth Engine that allows you to basically select anywhere you want. I don't have a keyboard right now, so I'm just going to go here, All right? And basically you can go anywhere in the world. You can adjust the dates if you want, so you can use your own period um, and basically recreate this map. Um, the, uh, I'll, I'll, the, the URL was in the previous slide, um, and yeah, basically you can add it. There's also a GitHub if you want to use the PyQGIS script. That was again on the previous slide. You can do the entire Sentinel-2 archive, right? So you can go 2016 to 
2021, which is the most recent growing season. And uh, we're going to be keeping updating it every year with each growing season. So the growing season for West Africa will end in October. And so we will have new images ready for 2022, ready for easy, easy use in 2022, uh, in October of this year. Um, would it be possible to go back to the slide, actually? Thank you. So yeah, you can use this. You can really do whatever you want with it. We certainly don't mind. Oh, excellent. Thank you. There we go. And so yeah, you have, uh, I created a tiny URL, time scan app, all one word, if you want to use the app. Time scan repo, if you want the GitHub. Um, and or you can email me, alex at Descartes.com, uh, or find me on Twitter. Um, always happy to talk about cows and maps or just, you know, again, please, if you want to look at the app or the code and you have any feedback, we would absolutely love to hear it. Um, we're always happy to learn what kind of improvements we can do. And yeah, I think that's all from me. Thank you very much. <laughs>